wish to welcome you to worship here at Market Street Presbyterian Church and welcome to a little bit of a different environment, a closer environment in room 201 rather than in the sanctuary. You can't be too spread out because there's not that much room to hide here so we're glad that you're here and we trust that you will experience community and that will be the theme of my message today from the book of Acts. So please join me in the call to worship. We have come to worship God. God is here. So in this time together, please stand if you are able and sing our opening hymn. In unity we lift our song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And our Heavenly Father, we ask that thy Holy Spirit will bind us as one in community. And that the voice that we have will be one voice, a voice of praise, a voice of thanksgiving, a voice of acknowledging your honor and your glory, that you and you alone reign, that you are sovereign, you are supreme. You are above all gods on the earth. You are the one who's in control of all of history. And we acknowledge you are to be in control of the church of Jesus Christ, with Christ, your Son, as the head. In this service of worship, let thy Holy Spirit move in the hearts and in the minds of God's people. For we ask it through Christ our Lord. Please continue in prayer with me as we acknowledge our sins and our need for forgiveness. Merciful God, we acknowledge our guilt and seek your face and your forgiveness. For we have not offered steadfast love to you or each other. We have not moved forward in faith, but have allowed ourselves to be stifled by fear. Revive us, raise us up, that we might live before you, rejoicing in the knowledge of your love. Amen. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians, we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporal, and what cannot be seen is eternal. And where I direct your focus in that which is eternal and cannot necessarily be seen by the human eye is the cross of Jesus, the Savior who has died upon the cross for my sins and your sins and the sins of the whole world. And those who truly acknowledge they are sinners, those who truly acknowledge their sins and confess them before God and do repent in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. This is the good news of the gospel. may be seated and I'm going to invite Mr. Jim Harriman to come forward here. He has a message not just simply for Rook but for all of us. So let us give our attention to Jim. Good morning Brooke. How are you? you d yeah. I, I, do you need to applaud? Absolutely. It's good to have you here today. Wave, yeah. Wave at all those people. Yeah. Good. 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 Brooke. What a joy. Yeah. Yeah, well, I thought today we'd talk a little bit about music. And, you know, they got those game shows that uh, you, you, you remember a word or you name the song. So we're going to have to help Brooke a little bit. But we'll start off one that mm, even Brooke's age might not be familiar with. But Jesus loves me. This I know cause the blank tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. strong. Okay, so that's it. Yeah, 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 that's right. Good, good, good. So that's our first one. Got you warmed up. Now we're going to move into an area that um, well, I'm not all that excited about, and that's country music. You see, the pastor and us have been talking about whether country music should be played here. I'm not a fan of country music, but I, but I don't have a problem with it being played here. So we're going to swing to country music and see if we can find a little God in country music. Here we go. I know it's a challenge. Here's the first one. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a... Rose. Along with the rain, well, along with the sunshine, there's got to be a little blank. Rain. Yeah. And if you've searched the Bible, Timothy in particular, what did he tell us? In this world, there will be trials and temptations. But take heart, 
because God will be there each and every minute through all those trials. Okay, here goes our second one. God is great, but sometimes life blank blank. Yeah, a little harder, huh? God is great, but sometimes life blank blank ain't good. <laughs> All right. And sometimes when I pray, things don't always turn out the way I blank blank blank. Almost. Think they should. Think they should. But I blank, blank, blank. Do it anyway. Exactly. Just because God doesn't seemingly hear your prayers immediately, what do we have to do? We have to be persistent. God wants you to pray persistently. Here we go. Final one, Neil. You ready? All right. I, you, everybody loves this one. I went skydiving. I went rocky mountain climbing. I went 2.6 seconds on a, bull, on a bull called blank, blank, blank. On a bull called. Yeah, you know, and I'll say it to you. I went skydiving. I went rocky mountain climbing. I went 2.6 seconds on a bull called. Tell him, Troy. Come on, music department. <laughs> Fu Man Chu. Fu Man Chu was the name of the bull. All right, here we go. And I loved deeper, and I lived sweeter, and I gave blank, 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 blank. <laughs> Say it again, sweetheart. <laughs> Absolutely right. Forgiveness I've been denying. So who says country music doesn't find God? You can find God anywhere. And here in that last song, the first three things wouldn't be my choice. But you got to look at the last three. Forgiveness I've been denying. How many of us could not benefit from that? We carry those doggone hardships. We carry that doggone resentment for forever when all we are doing is hurting our self. Yeah. Don't wait until the last minute to forgive. Do it when? Now. Get the comfort and the peace God sends you when? Now. And where does it tell you to do that in? Country music. Country music. Yeah. Not a fan. But realize God can be there in everything that we do. And yes, even in country music. Brooke, it's been so good to have you today. And what a praise you are. I know I put you to sleep, buddy, but that's all right. Let's say a little prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing Brooke to be here with us today. And as he grows each and every day, help all of us, his community, to show him the way to God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. At this time in the service, we will exchange the peace of Christ with one another.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I think we're going to get some rain. My beans are going to welcome. We have some announcements this morning. Uh, following the service today, uh, join us in the Williamsburg room for a hospitality hour hosted by the Tuesday at 6.30. You can't hear. Your voice to that voice you had in the media. <laughs> okay. Loud voice. Okay. <laughs> my, my wife says this is speaking. not picking up. It's not picking up. Okay. Yeah, we I'll can do a voice it. like you're on the radio. Okay. All right. <laughs> Here are the announcements. <laughs> Radio. Well, you can't do it. You Does can't that talk. Get it? Okay. You've got to keep moving. Oh, I think this one works. Is it working? Okay. All right. Well, I can shout with the best of them, but I don't know. Make a joyful noise under the Lord. Huh? Follow the service today. Please join us in the Williamsburg room for a hospitality hour hosted by Lori Purdy. Tuesday at 6.30, the Board of Deacons will meet. Wednesday at noon will be the prayer meeting in the chapel. Also Wednesday at 3 o'clock, Bible study will meet in room 219. If you're a visitor today, please fill out a visitor card located, in, well, it says pews, but there doesn't seem to be any pews in here. So, <laughs> but they're in the back. Uh, and uh, put them in the offering plate. Prayer request cards are also located in the church and will be placed in the offering plate if you have a prayer concern. Please check your bulletin for other upcoming events. Any announcements from the congregation? I have a uh, Apparently not. Okay, we shall go forth. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, these are perilous times filled with events that we fear are beyond our control and comprehension. Please give us hope. More than ever, we need to listen to your holy word to give us the understanding and to strengthen our faith. Amen. Hear the word of God and listen to his infinite wisdom. The reading today is in the 133rd Psalm. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. The word of the Lord.
Thank you very much, Lily. We appreciate it. Thank you. So I call your attention to the reading of God's Word from the book of Acts, chapter 2, starting at verse number 42, ending at verse number 47. Hear the Word of God. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayers. And awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. And they would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Well, last week I preached on the power of Pentecost and the message that was given by God to Peter. And the result was 3,000 people came into the church. So I'd like for you to imagine that we had some kind of an outdoor event here. And there was a preacher, whether it was Pastor Ken, Pastor Dottie, or Pastor John at AME Church, preached a message, and all of a sudden, in the city of Lima, there's 3,000 people that want to come into the fellowship of the church. Now that's exactly what happened. So the question is, what's next? In other words, that's just the start, not the end. That the 3,000 people come forward and are converted to the Christian faith. So where do we go from here? What's the next step? Well, the next step is a holy community. And this holy community is to be based on four things. Notice, the text begins, and they devoted themselves to. They persisted in. They were loyal to. They diligently strove for. They held fast to. They adhered to. They were faithful to. Now that's how the text begins. In other words, these people who were converted made a decision to go on in the Christian faith. In other words, that coming forward on that day was not the end, it was the beginning. And so, it is God's plan for God's people to dwell in holy community. And so in the book of Acts, we'll see there's four things that hold this up, four basic elements to this community. And the first one is, it says, they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles. The apostles were the ones that were present with Jesus. They were the ones who saw the risen Christ. They are the ones who can tell you exactly what is the content of the Christian faith. In other words, let's get it right. Let's not go off into some heresy. Let's not go off into some whim or false doctrine or philosophy of man. What is it that Jesus actually taught? The direct teaching of Jesus to the apostles and then to the church. Correct doctrine. Correct teaching. Now, in today's modern world, this is not prioritized. This is not the focus of churches as it once was. Churches oftentimes even fought over doctrine and split 
But we don't see that much today because most people don't think it's that important to get it right exactly what Jesus taught as it came to the apostles, as it comes to them. But this church said we want to get it right. What was it that Jesus taught? And therefore, we will abide under the teaching of the apostles, the ones who were sent. Correct doctrine. In fact, at one time, churches had Sunday school classes filled. At one time, churches had Bible studies filled. At one time, churches had Wednesday evening services filled. At one time, catechism was extremely important for youth. But what has happened today? Where is the focus? Where is the focus? Where is the focus? Is it on the correct doctrine of what Jesus taught? And so today we see a slipping away of this great desire to study and understand correctly what was taught. It's a lot like when you were in school and you went K through 12 and you knew that you had a test. You had to do some study. You had to get ready. Especially if you wanted to go to the next grade level. So where is that emphasis today? In the hearts and minds of God's people. Well it was in the early church and the early church was based on getting it right. What did Jesus teach? And therefore, the apostles' doctrine was central. Now, once you get the idea of doctrine being central, teaching being central, then you can go to the next uh, thing that is extremely vital in the life of the church. So you've got correct teaching, correct doctrine, then you go to what's called fellowship. Fellowship. Now I'll give you kind of a corny definition of fellowship because that will probably stick with you a lot better than the other one, but fellowship is fellows in the same ship. <laughs> okay. In other words, we're all in this together. It's the same boat. And I don't know if you've ever had opportunity to go on what they call a cruise ship. And you're out on the ocean waters. And there's one thing for sure. You share that boat with everyone that's there. Because if you didn't, you'd be in the water. So you share the boat, you share the food, and you share time together. Now you see, that's the church. We're all in a boat. We're all to share in the food, the Word of God. And so fellowship literally means holding in common. What is it that we all hold in common in our faith? In other words, it's more than just material and saying well, we're in common in this room. Yes, that's true. But let's go to the spiritual. What is it that we hold in common spiritually? We have been brought into Christ. Christ in us. The Holy Spirit in us. These are the things we hold in common. That I might know Him in His sufferings, Paul says, and in the power of His resurrection. In other words, our goal is to know Jesus Christ, to love Jesus Christ, and to serve Jesus Christ. So I hold that in common with you. And that is to be the focus of what's called fellowship. Now, I have to tell my stories because I know they, they can trigger things one way or the other in people. But, but uh, with church I served in, they always had, a, a, like we have, a coffee hour. And I was always, I always called it, you know, a fellowship hour. And I'm like, well, let's make it fellowship. 
Let's talk about the word. Let's talk about the sermon. You can tear the sermon apart if you want. But let's talk about it. So I remember one time I hosted it and I decided, well, if I'm hosting, it'll go my way. And I passed out these questionnaire for everybody to talk about these things that were in the Bible. And everybody looked at it and pushed it aside. In other words, we want to talk about the sports. We want to talk about the weather. Now I say that to kind of like illustrate the point that like fellowship is not just you simply being there. It's when you say, you know, I read in my Bible the other day that now you've got it in common and I've got it in common. Or you know, I've been praying that God would now you've got it in common, I've got it in common, because I pray. Or you know I was in my job and I encountered this thing that was really wrong. And my faith tells me it's wrong. So what do you, what can you tell me? How can you encourage? In other words, it's the things of faith that you hold in common. Okay, And that's called fellowship. So you can have fellowship anywhere, really, but you need to bring these things in and uh, bring them up in your time together. Now, they also participated thirdly in what's called the breaking of bread. Now, the breaking of bread in the early church was a common meal, a, a meal that you ate just for your body, but it also involved the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. In other words, it was a meal that satisfied you in body. But it also was a meal that satisfied you in soul spirit. In other words, it was the Lord's, what we call the Lord's Supper or communion. And they called them agape feast or love feast. In other words, we're celebrating God's love, first of all, by our... Food we have on table. Secondly, we celebrate God's love by the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. So that was the third element. Now the fourth element is the element of prayer. And this was a major part of the Jewish faith. And many of these people were coming right out of the Jewish faith. In fact, in this, in this time, in this passage, they're meeting in the temple. Now that won't happen too much later on because they'll try to meet in the temple, they'll try to meet in the synagogue, but eventually there'll be a lot of conflict because the faith will conflict with the teachings of the Jewish nation at the time. But for right now, they're in the temple. And they're trying to blend in. They're trying to bring the people into this faith. And the faith of Judaism had prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. In other words, prayer was very much a part of the early community of faith. They used the Psalms. The Old Testament Psalms were the prayer book of Israel. And he, these folks are getting into the temple and they're saying, you know, we should be praying. We should be praying. Now, of all things in church life, where it is most difficult to try to enlist people is the whole concept of praying together as a body of Jesus Christ. That's the most difficult thing. Because for some reason, you want to pass over that. Now, I've always tried, wherever I've been, to have a prayer meeting for the churches where I've served. And uh, sometimes I've been successful to actually have them in people's homes. And, and uh, it's, it's quite a delight that when someone opens their home for a prayer meeting. But I don't know what goes on or what's in the minds of people, but it's, it's just, if it's prayer, forget it. And yet, these people, the early church, they were dedicated to it. In other words, they committed themselves. We're told in the opening line, 
they devoted themselves to it. They were going to be there every day and they were going to say prayers for the world around them. They were going to say prayers for the families of the people. They were going to say prayers for the church. In fact, if you go on in the book of Acts, you'll see that the prayers of the early church were very powerful. In fact, they led to Peter getting out of prison miraculously. And so we have so many results that have come out of the prayers of the early church. But why is it that right now it's extremely difficult to say, let's get together and let's just do one thing. Let's pray to Almighty God. You see, the early church didn't see it as a problem. They saw it as an opportunity. They saw it as a blessing. And therefore they were meeting with that intent that we don't have an agenda sheet. All we want to do is say prayers to Almighty God. And so this early church was dedicated to these four things. To the teaching of the Lord's apostles, to fellowship, to breaking bread, and to prayer. Now, what is the result? What happens? What happens to this community? Well, we're told there was a sense of awe. A sense of God is right here in our midst. There's a sense that the Holy God is pleased with us. The Holy God is pleased with this community. And He is right in our midst. So this was the focus of the early church. That they were about pleasing God. Not necessarily pleasing people. But pleasing God. And when they pleased God, there was an effect that came upon them. And the effect was something really great is happening right here in the church. So I'd like to suggest, well, no more than suggest, preach. <laughs> this hasn't changed. In other words, these four things are still what we need to do. We need to get correct doctrine. We need to have fellowship with one another. We need to break bread. And we need to be in prayer. So the early church was about those four things. And they were passionate about it. In other words, there was nothing else pulling them away. They met day by day. And you know the greatest added benefit was we see as a secondary benefit God was adding to their numbers day by day. And there was no gimmick. There was nothing that they pulled in as a gimmick. It was just simply those four things. Studying Holy Word, sharing God's, uh, uh, God, God in prayer and God in, in, in the Holy Word of God, and then bread, breaking bread, and then prayer. That's all it was. And yet you see, God brought people into that. Why? Because it was all of God. It wasn't really of any human being. It was of God. God brought them in. And there was great results in the early church. So I'd like to encourage Market Street Church to consider those four basic things and to abide with them and to trust that God will do the same. He will bring His presence and we will have that sense of awe. Heavenly Father, help us to strive for what the early church was like in that they were concerned about getting doctrine correct. They were concerned about sharing with one another in faith. 
and they were concerned about the sacrament of Lord's Supper as well as common meals and they were people of prayer. Oh God, make us just as it was in the early days of the church of Jesus Christ. We ask it in his holy name. Amen. We go to our second song, which is, I love thy kingdom, Lord. So as an example of something you could do, <laughs> I might be getting on your nerves right now, but that's okay. <laughs> I can get on people's nerves, I know that. Would you go into Williamsburg, Rome, just say something like, um, what does that mean, dear is the apple of thine eye, or something like that, and then somebody will say, well, I think it means this, or... Now, you see, you get a little bit of a focus, like... It's not sports, it's not weather. Now I'll have you extremely paranoid about talking about anything about this other than the service or the sermon. But I'm trying to illustrate fellowship. It's a little more than just saying, well, the weather's nice or the weather's bad or whatever. You got to have some kind of a thing in the middle there that brings you both into the power of your faith and what your faith means. So give it a little try, see what happens, and mention something, and see if you can spark it in someone else. And see what ha Just see what happens. And then after that, I'll leave you alone. Okay, I promise I'll leave you alone.
Father, we present these tithes, offerings, and gifts to you. And ask through the power of the name of Jesus, you will multiply them, bless them, and use them for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ in this world. For we pray it all in his name. Amen. We move into a time of prayer and ask if there are any prayer requests. We do have a microphone and ask that you please use the microphone for the prayer requests. We did have a report that uh, Margaret Stevenson's daughter, Laura Stonebreaker, was uh, taken to hospital and had surgery. And she's over in Westerville, Ohio, at following surgery. So please pray for Laura. We have any other concerns? Or your grandson Carter? Carter he has chicken pox. He's 18. Do we have any others? Our Heavenly Father, we hold before you those who are sick and in need a physical touch of healing in their body. We pray especially for Laura. In the name of the Lord Jesus, bring healing to her in body, soul, and spirit. And for Carter as well, as we pray for him to bring healing to him. And Heavenly Father, there's maybe several others that were not mentioned by name. But we hold them before you through Christ the Lord. And we acknowledge Christ is our mediator. We acknowledge that he is the way to God. We acknowledge that things must be asked in his name. So we present them to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. For those neighbors, those friends... And those individuals that we know that are suffering, who are enduring in the midst of hardships, we pray for them, that you empower them with your grace, and that you grant unto them thy Holy Spirit so they can endure in time of suffering, so they can endure in time of hardship, so that they can endure through physical suffering, through physical pain, and that the ultimate outcome will be their faith will be strengthened, that their faith will be refined and that they will have a wonderful, wonderful trust in you because they will know that you brought them through. They will know that you empowered them. They will know that you're the one who is the healer even though doctors and hospitals are used by you. But ultimately, healing comes from thee. We acknowledge you are the Lord, our God, our healer and we place before you all the names of those individuals who are in need of your healing touch and power. Here are our prayers for the church today. We acknowledge that the church today sometimes has gone off in different directions. But we'd like to be completely concerned like the early church for the, all these things that were mentioned in the book of Acts so that we too can be patterned after early church. We hold before you the needs of our church. We hold before you the needs of our community. We hold before you the needs of our nation. We hold before you all who are struggling, all who are questioning, all who are hungering, all who are thirsting. Take them, Lord, to the waters that are fresh. Take them, Lord, to the waters that are spiritual waters of life. Give unto them bread, the living bread of the Word of God. And ask them, Heavenly Father, that you will bring that sense of satisfaction by that wonderful fellowship with you and fellowship in the church of Jesus Christ. We hold these before you through Christ the Lord who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we'd like to acknowledge Kenderson. Welcome. We'd like to acknowledge your presence. Welcome to Market Street Church. And 
Your friend Gabriel is with you, and we'd also like to acknowledge Neil, who is here too as well. And those who are visiting with us and joining us, please make everyone feel welcome in this holy community of faith. <laughs> Let us stand and close with where charity and love prevail. So I'd like to say thank you to John for the selection of these hymns that are very appropriate. And I know he labors to, I'll give him a theme, and he labors to find just the right ones. And our opening, as well as this one, were just right on target with what I hope was the theme of our time together. So go forward as a community of faith, welcoming and inviting anyone to enter into the community of faith, as long as you realize it is a holy community of faith based on the teachings of the apostles and fellowship in Jesus Christ. Amen.
Well done.